Hello there. Welcome to the 420 Lifestyle Show. I'm Carly Marley. And I'm BC Butt Gal. And we're here today with Kyle from Glass Roots, as well as Craig X from Expert Joints. <laughs> no, he's not. Get Where your, is he? Yes, that's your seat. <laughs> And we got lots of goodies here today. He had to oh, put out all the one. beautiful glass first, so. Yes. Half as beautiful as the ladies. Aw, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and half as beautiful as these buds. Got some tasty buds here. Smoking on some. Uh, this is the ice rack. And this is from the Cannabis Culture. Located on 3421 East Tastings, right near the p &E in Vancouver. That just opened up. Super awesome. If you haven't checked it out yet, you should definitely go check it out. From the Temple of Calyx Collective? Uh, yes, it is. It is. Yes, it is. Had that on the show a couple weeks ago. Mm, it's mm. good. You're going to like it. Did we get it on the bed cam? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Should we put it back? Yeah. Should we put it back? Yeah, oh, put shit. It back. Let go of Henry. I'll pick up this bed. This Need something behind it? Sweet. Now we can smoke it. Now we can smoke <laughs> it. I would hope so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm. And we also got some can of drink that we can mix into our yeah. drinks. And we too. also got some infused beef jerky from Moda. Oh. So we can munch on that. And <laughs> also a clear spear, which is the new 300 milligram. Okay, I haven't ones. tried one of these yet, and I've well, been hearing lots to. about Oh, they're them. nutty. I've heard they're pretty they're nutty. nutty. They will put a hole in your to-do list like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> what was I doing today? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing anymore. <laughs> Yeah, we had a couple staff try them. Actually, it was after you gave us a bag of goodies yep. from Moda. Yep. We kind of split them out, and yep. there was two staff members that actually had to go home early because they're like, "I just, I, I just need to go to bed." Sorry. Yeah, sh show to Diana. She came through the show a few weeks back. Uh, we were looking at all sorts of goodies, and they came and showed us some of the new, uh, new tasty treats. Of actually, I think it was the pre-Christmas show. Yeah, it, was it was Elf Diana yeah. came through. Yeah. yeah. Oh, with, yes, yeah. With a pink suitcase full of awesomeness. She always has how is she a does. bag of everything. And then we gave a bunch away, and then she was like, here, take the rest home. And I can't, I can't eat all that. So I went and just laced out a bunch of people in the store downstairs. It's kind of nice. I, I noticed that very often, I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but lots of times, just as my show ends on Thursdays, <laughs> there seems to be a lot of staff huddling around, just, just in plain <laughs> sight. I don't, I don't know why, but show leavings, uh, I think are getting a reputation, but sorry to lay out the staff. Sorry, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Laurent. Yeah. Well, it's, it's something that happens. It's one of the, the occupational hazards, if you will, when you work in the cannabis industry, for sure. Could be worse. Occupational yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've had, you know, staff that have had to go home after they were like, they were offered by an extract company, here, do you want this gram job? They're like, sure, just let me lower the temp on the email. And they're like, no, no, just hit it as it is at 900 degrees. And they're like, if that's the only way you let me hit it, okay. Yes. So, okay. Didn't take long for him. He was like upstairs in the lounge, and then the, a few minutes later, he was in the store, like hiding behind the counter, and he's like, I don't feel very good. <laughs> I want to go home. You probably shouldn't dive at 900, especially a gram. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so, we were going to talk with Kyle from Glass Roots Hemp and Smoke Shop. Um, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a busy afternoon. I'm happy to be here. Thank That's you. Good. Thank you for coming down. I appreciate you being on the show. Um, so first of all, can you tell us uh, where is Glassroots located and when did it open? Um, okay, so we're located in Burnaby. Before we start, okay. um, I brought some gifts. So oh. I, I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Whoa. So oh some pencil dabbers from Culprit so Crafts. Oh, those are cool. Glass. There you are. Thank the little racer so tops much. and shit. And uh, that, one of these pendies, the Lego pendy, is for my, for my buddy here, Expert Joints. Oh, oh my shit. Goodness. But do you oh, want to tell everybody cool. about your Lego? <laughs> Come on. Come on, now that you brought up the Lego. Yeah, I, <laughs> Come I, on. just as much as I love glass and collect glass, I also collect Lego. Um, <laughs> since, I was, yeah, since I was a young kid, I've been a huge Lego fan. And... Um, as I have my own kids now, it gives me a perfect excuse to jump back on board and, you know, just uh, build with my kids. It's totally awesome. And I seen this guy from the States, Aaron Park Glass, about a month and a half ago. He was doing auctions on Pendies. He calls them e-Legos. 
And uh, I won an auction and I was speaking with him um, through direct message. He's like, yeah, I'd love to get some in your shop. And I was like, yes, let's do it. So we got a big order of them. Uh, this is uh, clear with an opal in it. Oh, shit, an man, eight that's stutter. Good. Yeah, that's all you. Enjoy. Thank you, man. I really appreciate yeah, that. This, no problem. Oh, this Thank you so sick. much. Yeah, that's super. I'll show appreciate. you all this later on Instagram. We're actually we're live on Instagram, oh, expert joints page at the same time. We're multi streaming here, baby. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but please, we, she asked you the question now. Where are you located? Okay, so we are we are located uh, in Burnaby. Um, we are right on the actual border of New Westminster and Burnaby. Um, when we were initially looking for our location, um, we wanted to be in New Westminster. But uh, when we approached the city, they have implemented bylaws against paraphernalia, so we weren't able to. Um, and we got really lucky because our location is right on the border. So we have a lot of our customers come in and they think we're in New Westminster. Um, but we're right in Burnaby, 7675 6th Street. We're one uh, block over from Canada Way, which is like the, the main street that lots of people know. Canada Way in Edmonds is really close to us. Nice. Um, yeah, it's a prime location for anyone in Coquitlam, uh, New Westminster, Burnaby. We see customers coming from Surrey, too. Because um, we're right on the other side of the port, uh, Petula and the Portman Bridge, so good location. And when did you guys open up? We opened two years ago, um, next month actually, so we're coming right nice. up on our two year anniversary. Yeah, we're really, really excited. Uh, we had a, our brick and mortar store for two years, then we had uh, about four months of online, uh, just trying to get ourselves established with the online sales, and that's when we decided that uh, there's definitely an opportunity, and we opened our brick and mortar, so yeah, two years. So That's I was going to ask then, I, I wasn't sure because I wasn't super familiar. So you guys are the, the smoke head shop, smoke shop, glass provider, not glass maker. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, so just to clarify, because there's a lot of glass people out there in this day and age. So um, yeah, and actually like, it's, uh, it's funny that you bring that up because we are looking to add that element as well uh, with in-house glass blowing. And uh, myself, cool. I'm cool. actually going to be getting on the torch and looking to make like slides and pipes and stuff like that that we can put right in the shop because... Uh, Every day for the last two years, um, when I explain to people that we have locally made glass, the next question I always get is, oh, so which one did you make? And <laughs> yeah, right. I always have to explain to them that I only... I just um, sell them. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. facilitating the sale, yeah. But uh, I would love to be able to put my own glass art into people's houses. Uh, and just starting with pipes and pendants and little bowls, so that's kind of where it's going uh, have, for myself, too. Have you been yeah. behind the torch before? No. I've spent many hours watching, um, and I've... I've wanted to, and I've had the opportunity to, but I've always been too nervous because I am a perfectionist, and I like to, um, you know, be able to create right away. So I, I fought with the, the internal side of it, I guess, of actually letting myself fail a bit and learn. Um, and now I'm, I'm prepared for the battle and prepared to just essentially watch money melt away in front of me <laughs> until I figure it out. And, you should and totally give it to me. Watch the oh, yeah. that nice and trim, bro. Yeah, you I, should I, totally go start. for it. When I, I did one video with Nico, and I plan on doing more where I'll, I'll get together with a glass artist and just kind of screw around behind the torch. And I was only kind of planning on doing the one to just kind of see how it went. And then after I got behind the torch, I was like, okay, this is so addictive. This is so much fun. It's so much less intimidating than I thought, too. I thought it was going to be really, like, hot and feel kind of messy but it's not it's like it's way different than i thought it would be and it was a lot of fun and now that i've done it once i'm like okay i need to get behind the torch again so carly i have a like feeling fire. once you do it you'll want to hmm? carly like fire yeah <laughs> i do i do it's a lot of fun so i know i'll definitely be getting behind the torch again um so on your website it says buy local support local uh, for the people who don't know what you mean by that, can you explain to us what that means? Um, for our glass selection, about 75% of the glass that we have is locally made. Um, all of our hand pipes are locally made, and if it was up to, up to me, um, we would be 100% locally made glass, but the market and our client base also demands um, yeah. a lot of other things. But our initial vision from the day that we opened our doors, and even before we opened our doors, um, you know, even me as a human, it's, it's always wanting to support local and try to give back to my own community and keep the money in the community. Um, and I, I realized uh, a huge opportunity with local glass. There was tons of local glass blowers and there wasn't really any shops that were um, going out of their way to try to push the local glass and to, uh, to push the scene. So we jumped on that. And uh, after a couple months, we realized that we would need to um, expand out into like American and import glass as well. Initially, we were just Canadian glass. Um, but we do, anything that we can get our hands on that is locally sourced, we will put it on our shelves and we'll do it with a smile on our face as long as it's a quality product. 
Um, and we're always trying to source quality local stuff, so that's all we're about. Um, but again, we, we have to always uh, try to meet the needs of everyone, and um, Canada being such a new market um, and really turning into like an industry now, um, we're able to source out more local stuff, but we still do have to go to the States and obviously overseas. It just is what it is. Hey, what can I say? Smoking papers are made in Spain, but you can get in <laughs> Canada. So. Well, there's a lot of really talented Canadian artists. I, I mean, in Vancouver, it's it's really obvious. You meet a lot of them hanging out at the lounges and stuff. But there's some really impressive American artists out there for sure that definitely deserve their spot on the shelf as well. So I think it's good when shops include both because you know. Sometimes you come to shops and they only have Canadian, and it would be nice to access some of the American artists without having to order it online or go through an Instagram auction and stuff. And there's a lot of options for that right now. Yeah, that's the response that we've heard from a lot of our clients is that they're happy to be able to come into the shop and purchase an American piece and not get battered on the exchange rate um, and customs and having to deal with the artist or wait for it to come. And uh, tripping balls if it's going to break on the way there. Yeah, yeah. Or if customs, or it's going to come yeah, across yeah, even. Yeah. Right? Customs is going to get a hold of it. And oh, what's have, this? Uh, yeah, have something to do with it's it. It's mine now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so good. what sort of artists could we expect to see in your store then? So many. <laughs> yeah, essentially we'll from dabs. the day that we've opened, um, anyone who, I don't know who this goes to, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, anyone who's uh, walked into our door and we've had um, a, a whole bunch, yeah. right. <laughs> we've had a whole bunch of uh, glass boys walking to our door, we're always willing to support them um, anywhere from like uh, the really well-established guys like um, Corey Glass, um, those type of names all the way down to guys who are still establishing themselves and kind of everything in between. We're not, uh, we're not biased about who we put on the shelves. Essentially, well, who do we have on the table here that you brought? So what I, what I brought today was a, yeah, it was a mix of some local and some American pieces. Um, are they, can I grab one and show it or yeah, you guys can show it? Cool. Do you want, do you want to, yeah, this works. Yeah, so that's a, that's a double uptake, double drain recycler by Stevi Glass. It has eight opals. Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. A local guy who uh, we've been uh, selling his glass now and dealing with him for about a year and a half. Um, and he's always progressing. He's a really good example of uh, kind of where the glass scene, Canadian glass scene is going. He's, uh, in, in a year and a half, he's like improving tenfold from the function to uh, the aesthetics of his glass. And this one here is for your giveaway? Yeah, so that piece there free shit. Uh, is yeah. free shit, yeah, pretty much. And for real free, no purchase necessary, no nothing. You can That's just, oh, you, we're going to announce how you can win it later on today when we're finished the interview. But uh, yeah, it's going to be no, you know, no purchase necessary. It'll be very easy to win. Um, it'll be fun. We're going to make you guys do something fun for your entry. Jumping jacks. That's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> what colors are this uh, the glass on this giveaway? They're really cool. Um, it has some Lucy. Um, there's Illuminati in it as well, um, in the clear. And I believe it's uh, purple rain, the purple highlights. The purple rain, yeah, that's the color. It's so like, it's such a pastel-y purple. It's so pretty. Yeah, so that piece we're going to be giving it away. It's valued at 1500 bucks. It comes with a wow. uh, matching Goddamn. carb cap. Put it, oh yeah. Directional flow. Which one? This little one here? Yeah. $1,500. $1,500. But free for this giveaway. Yeah. That's a hell of a win. <laughs> yeah, that is a hell of a win. Yeah, nice. no, we, we are really um, so grateful for all the support that we've got over the last two years. And uh, we, we want to show it with a proper giveaway make sure that somebody has an opportunity to really get blessed with a new locally made piece and I'm sure that uh, whoever wins will be ecstatic about it so for us it's worth it that's fucking legit man that's awesome um, do you consider Glassroots to be part of the activist community absolutely um, and why that is is because we as much as we do listen to the laws uh, we also don't <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we, we have a lounge in the back and we're happy to facilitate, uh, you know, extract guys to glass blowers and everything in between that is still considered very much underworld, um, like counterculture. And uh, especially with the lounge being in Burnaby, like we push the limits there. Um, but w it's something that's needed to just grow the culture. And I've seen it so many times when a customer comes in and there's a handful of guys in the back who are seshing on locally made pieces and they come in and they're interested in buying a new rig or a new bong 
They go, hey, man, come check out these pieces in the back. And they see five, ten, whatever guys with nice locally made pieces. They're not going to want to go and buy like a biohazard or whatever. They're going to want to get a nice locally made piece like that. And, um, so I think definitely like we're getting people into like the next kind of stage of being like not just pot smokers, but like, yeah, trying to Be make a statement thing. with what, what they purchase and um, how they go about medicating for sure. That's awesome. That's uh, that's great. Uh, it's a lot of fun too, turning people on to the local glass for sure, because it's very addictive <laughs> when you start getting into glass. It, you, it's either hit and miss. People are really kind of like, okay, that's cool, or they're like, this is insane. Show me more of this. I want to buy all of it. You know. So I'm the same with black cases. I have a case or a bag for everything. I don't know why. I got a computer. <laughs> I got a laptop. I got. I need a new case for it. CLG. That's fair. <laughs> See, I just, I need it. I want a dab rig for everything. There you so. Go. <laughs> yeah. I got like three or four of them, and I just have to like, have a case for each one. Because for, you never know, I might need to carry one of them at a time. Or My two case, time. I actually got from Glassroots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we have uh, cases, all the good stuff, accessories. Um, and you have art, too. Yeah, and we have tons of local art. We love to support <laughs> the local art scene as much as we can. Um, we have uh, art from that guy, Soak, who I think, or Soak, he's, uh, he has some art up here as well. He's done some work here um, and around. A really well-known guy. And just, we're so happy to be able to, like, showcase their work. And, again, like, the pipe culture, that, like, kind of underground world, meeting the graffiti underground world um, under one roof, it's cool. And there's, like, a lot of, um, like, people get excited, you know, on... On the different things, some guy will come in for glass and he'll be like, "Oh man, that's a that's a soak piece, or that's a lesson piece, or that's a grom," and uh, then you have a totally new kind of connection there. So uh, being able to facilitate both sides is awesome too. That's great. Can you tell us a little bit more about your lounge? Yeah, the lounge is open uh, seven days a week, eleven till seven, uh, from Sunday to Thursday, and eleven till eight, Fridays and Saturdays. Um, it's just pretty much bring your own smoke and come and hang out. It's 600 square feet. We have three couches. We have a, a little table set up. Um, we're actually building a, an e-nail bar for 420. Nice. Yeah, so, so um, we don't have to uh, bring a torch or anything. Just come bring your rig and, and hook it up to the e-nail. Um, and we also have 10 shop rigs as well um, that we're, you know, we just kind of give up to our customers and say, have, have at her, um, enjoy, smoke out of. We have a couple of really nice blaze pieces. Uh, we have a stebby recycler. Um, we have a Wyoming Mofo anglerfish that uh, is like a, just a super nice sculpted detail piece that I you don't that see a lunch. lot of. <laughs> Ang anglerfish? Yeah, uh, it was a nice little salad. It was really good. What <laughs> color is the uh, is the Wyoming? Sorry? Which color is, colors it's is like the Wyoming? It's like a fritted blue. It's actually, uh, cool. I've only seen two that were that style. And, uh, yeah. It's almost 420, I'm sorry. It's almost yeah. 420. That's why we're all hurriedly <laughs> rushed, like rolling joints. Yeah, I, I had the little spidey sense go off for a second. And that's when I grabbed his phone. He's like, what are you doing? I'm not prepared. <laughs> but uh, we do uh, Faded Fridays, um, where we oh, uh, Turp Fire Society, uh, they're really, really nice high-end meds. They come in, they just kind of drop slabs down on the table and say, have at it. Shout out to Ryan Mill, man. We yeah, love yeah, shout out to Ryan Mill, man. Award winning. Yeah. Award winning. They cleaned, They did pretty well at the uh, Canadian Fire Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah they've been... So. Turp Fire been doing is very amazing. Well. Yeah. They are like Good the people. terpiest brand. If you like terpy dabs, then they're a great brand to buy because it doesn't matter what strain it is, it's always going to be flavorful. Uh, it's always fire. Yeah. So... Which I love personally. I'm a really big terpene person. So. Terp nerd. It's true. <laughs> but yeah, definitely being able to scoop a piece and come back to the lounge is nice. And uh, well, that's really cool because yeah, you're people gonna be appreciate by it. it, and you get the you see people in there blazing on some yeah. heavy shit, and you're like, yo, I want to go. Yeah, do that, you get to right? make so. your new scoop, and then right away you can go sesh it. Yeah, that's my favorite. It's, I always do yeah, that. I always get my pieces at CC, and I always go right upstairs and test it out because yeah, like course. you don't want to wait. You don't yeah. have to wait all the way till you get home. You want to like, and it's nice too because then when you're in the lounge and you've got like. Other people who appreciate glass it's and they can feedback come on and be it. Like, yeah, yeah, they're just nice excited piece. as you yeah, are for the exactly. scoop. Exactly, but it's definitely transformed. Like it wasn't always a lounge. Like, what time is it? Definitely. Yeah. When oh, is it 4:20? Oh, Happy 4:20! Happy 4:20! <laughs> I don't have a joy, and I'm not smoking anything, but I just took a dab. Uh, Whatever. Here, we'll heat up another dab. We'll do more dabs, well, and I'm about to spark this we joint. We can roll this into a joint too. This yeah, there's this one. There's an expert joint coming your way. Oh, oh nice. shit. 
Great. Okay, so we got 420 covered. That's good. Awesome. Um, oh, yes. wow. Thank you. Thanks, Jacoby. It's the nine pound hammer, one gram of extracts from Pi. <laughs> <laughs> here, we should get this on the shatter cam. Shatter oh, cam. Wow. <laughs> we got a lot of cameras in here. Yeah, we got, got the like shatter cam, the shatter cam, the joint cam, the bud cam. It's pretty. I don't know how Alyssa manages them all. Shout out to Alyssa. <laughs> Alyssa's the best. That's why she's the boss. Boss, Doobie. <coughs> Plus, she will fire you. <coughs> Watch it. Wow. I'm excited to dab off some of that. So, Kyle, what's your favorite method of smoking? I like that question. Dabbing, for sure. <laughs> Dabbing? It's, yeah, I like to dab. Um, for a long time, I smoked, I smoked joints. Um, and then I was a bong guy. Uh, I smoked two joints. I was always smoking joints. I always had pre-roll -joint, pre joints ready to go. Um, I like but, that. Uh, I, then I had kids, and it was a little bit stinky and a little bit mm. much. So I went to the bong reps. Um, and then uh, when I opened my shop, um, before we had a brick and mortar location, retail location, I had a bunch of orders sitting in my house, a bunch of glass sitting in my house, and uh, I wanted to go kind of shop it around. Shop it around <laughs> to some of the dispensaries, because uh, I saw an opportunity at the time. I'm like, well, here's all these dispensaries that had just opened. This was uh, like 20, end of 2014, I believe. So all these dispensaries that had just opened, and none of them had any glass to sell. And everyone was buying herbs there, and I saw an opportunity to go and try to sell some box. So I went around, and uh, <laughs> I don't know, there was everywhere. Um, yeah, so I went around, and finally, this uh, one of the dispensaries. Um, they were really cool, but they were uh, like one of the more like dabbled on the other side of the law dispensaries, and uh, they bought a bunch of stuff for me. And we were in the back room, and we were, like, doing the cash transaction, and they're taking the glass. And uh, they're like, hey, man, you want a dab? And at the time, I had never done a dab, like an actual dab mm -hmm. before. <laughs> and I didn't want to look like a chump. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, yeah, man, sure, hook me up. I dab all the time. Do it every day, man. I had and six before like, I got had, here. Yeah, they had, like, a big, like, a propane torch oh. and, like, a, a tie nail with, like, a big china rig. And they, like, heated it up red hot. And they're like, yeah, man, here you go. You say you dab all the time, you know? <laughs> Yeah, God. thanks Thanks for the glass. It was good to meet you. And they fucking globbed me like some poop soup on this red hot nail. And I died. And I didn't want anything no. to do with dabbing. I thought it was fucked. I thought they drugged me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was Terrible. sweating. Yeah. And uh, so, so, yeah, it started off bad. Started <laughs> and then he just, oh, yeah. But then he fell in love with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we have to give you a dab knowing that. Once you here. realized how to dab? Yeah, once I realized that you don't well, go in at a thousand degrees oh, on yeah. a red yeah. hot tie nail with poop soup, it was well, good to even, go after that. Even at <laughs> 420, <laughs> I found, yeah, yeah. yeah, at 420, I found even this year, I don't know whose booth it was, so good thing I don't know who you are, because I would probably say who you are. But, um, you know, how everyone's giving out dabs, and the guy's like, oh, yeah, here you go, it's like red hot. I'm like... Dude, I'm not taking it like that. Like, I'm letting it cool down. And the one guy's like, oh, she knows how to dab. I'm like, so what, are you just killing people all day? You like, don't. oh, ho, ho, like. That's <laughs> so mean. I know. So you're lucky I don't remember who you were, because. She go fuck you up this year, though. <laughs> Here, we'll pass you. Since you like dabbing, we'll pass you a dab. Awesome. Which is this super Thank terpy you. stuff from El Dorado Extracts. They're Moby Dick. And then we'll try out oh, some of this stuff from Pie Dick extra. is delicious. Don't touch the hot delicious. end. Delicious. <laughs> oh, okay. Can we Who pass the carpet? Made this? Can I? Can we like? Sorry. What's the cooldown okay, we'll time? Oh my god. Um, mm. Just do it now. Just do it red hot. Just kidding. <laughs> it's Feel probably it been about Feel twenty it seconds. It, yeah. I usually give it about thirty seconds from when I heat it. Yes. yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah. It is a stabby Joe for people who didn't hear on the mic. Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take a puff off the mic there for a second. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hot. Hey, I can see a bunch of comments or people joining on your phone, but. Yeah, we can't see what it says. Hi, everybody. Hi. Watching on Thanks for watching on Instagram. Instagram. Thanks for watching on Facebook. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Yeah, right? This is the tri stream here. What about you, Craig? What's your favorite method of smoking? Hmm. Hmm. Well, hang on, just in case nobody can see this <coughs> on the shirt there. Uh, I got to go with joints. 
Yeah, Oddly enough, it'd be a bit of a surprise, but yes, I gotta go with joints. Uh, to that effect, I brought rolling papers for the gals here because, oh, you oh, know, damn. that's how I roll. So we've got, as I use, the Smoking Master King sizes. One oh, for each of you because king sizes right I smoke now. the king. <laughs> now they're, yeah, they're the, they're the slims. They're only the 37 millimeters, so they're good. I like no extra papers. I like those. Nice. Um, yes. One and a quarters because these are the standards. You know, pretty much everybody smokes Sometimes one and a quarter Sometimes we've got to be basic. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And the seldom seen... <laughs> but kind of cool, the standard oh. paper, like the regular single, but the double wide pack. <laughs> yeah. You don't see the double wide packs very many around here. No. So The double wide packs little. always throw off my customers because they think it's a double wide paper. Like, no, no, I don't yeah. want the double <laughs> wide <laughs> paper. Yeah, right, no. No, it's, the only it's more. One, it's, it's good. It's pretty much me. only zigzags that you really Here, see these with. Yeah, jerky. right? Exactly. It's, oh, it's sure. medicated. That, shit, that is good, uh, I'm in. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I smoke joints. Thank I smoke you. a lot of them in a day. Of course. Please, <laughs> make sure. Sorry, I have if, a uh, I Every have time, you've got to do it. <laughs> we'll have to get a producer one day, just have it on a hot <laughs> button, and just yeah. play that song every time. Yeah. It's like, it's like, that was easy. I smoked two joints. Yeah, I smoke a lot of them. All the joints, all the time. I like dabbing, too. Um, but I take small dabs. I think you all would refer to me as a Barbie dabber, pretty much. Dab, yeah. Um, I don't take massive big dabs because they make me just kind of hack. But I've always hacked off bong tokes and hot knives. And I was making uh, butane extraction in 99 and shit like that. Oh, were you? The taffy. Yeah, we were blowing it off with hair dryers and silver bowls and shit I like that. I had no like, idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. By 2004, I was like, this is just messy and gooey. And we don't even know what to call this and do this. I said, but... This will really catch on if someone can clean this up and make this process a little bit more refined. Yeah, you were right. And there it was. But, um, yeah, I, what I like to do when I'm smoking dabs is smoke a joint while I'm having the dab because it helps me like calm my lungs back down. They're used to that. that. That's yeah. what I'm good for. I can do that all day. <laughs> so I don't take the big giant dabs, but I do to enjoy a lot of them. I got the dab card at home, the dab Larry. If those on Instagram are familiar with it, it's full of all sorts of leftover samples and products. There's 30 or 40 at least products in there. I got the subby and the nail on there. It's it's dope. I enjoy it. It's they're fun for me. They don't get me high, but they're tasty and they're oh, enjoyable and they're fire a lot. Over there. They're good. Sorry, <laughs> I got distracted. Uh, flames. Need to cue to. Now that I had a dab, I'm in my right state of mind, and I remember oh. to untuck my pendy. There you go. I wanted to show this off. Yeah, it's a Blaze Vagabond Spinning Eye collab. It's one of two. So, Majestic. Yeah. Whoa. Super ill. Beautiful. Yeah, Blaze Glass and Vagabond, both BC locals, killing it. Yeah. Um, Vagabond is credited the original <laughs> spinning eye guy, so he does this yeah, on a lot of his yeah. pipes and rigs, and uh, a lot of glass blowers give him credit as the first guy to come up with that technique. I see. He is down in Mexico, and he actually knows my cousin yeah. down there, <laughs> which is crazy because I've only met him once. That's funny. <clears throat> Yeah, right. so I'm going to medicate my, my Snapple. Uh-oh. Put some snap in your Snapple. Put some snap in my Snapple. Some snap can of The beef jerky was pretty good. Some snap your neck. I'm down with the beef jerky. Mm. Yeah, right. that, that moto beef jerky is great. fucks with it. Is yeah. it okay? Uh, moto cannabis products. Well, there you go. That's your so on cam. Dot C. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yes, check them out. On, oh, Carly online. doing that pour. Uh-oh. Mm. Drop. So that's what that flavor? That should be good. That's this is no flavor. I think it's just regular. Oh, just clear. It's just, it's just Canada. I seen, a dude, no I seen a dude pouring that into a water bottle, just with water the other day. Just yeah, yep. I. Uh, it's got that much flavor. Different manufacturer, but there's another one. I quite, I'm a big fan of TCC and water. Put yeah. it in a shaker bottle and just. Uh, it's oh good, yeah, man. I remember they had that at some. I don't know. They were uh, mixing it with water. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. It's still, it's still good. good. These guys were generous enough yeah. to. Uh, yeah, the syrup is great. Oh, and their gummies over there, too. We, we do forgot about those too. last show, too. Oh, yeah. Nice. We didn't eat them. I was going to give them away to but all the couples on Valentine's. We also <laughs> didn't finish. It was too much on Valentine's. Too much glitter. <laughs> they may or may not be glitter on those. The other glass pieces, this little guy right here. You want to talk about your glass? The Ben Cater? Yeah. yeah. The Ben Cater? Yeah, we just got a Ben Cater dime piece drop uh, last week. Um, they're just like little, they kind of look like bells with the mouthpiece and the joint, but... Uh, they're really, really clean. They function awesome. This one has a little chaos marble going on on the back. Um, and this one is CFL reactive. So because we have too much lights going on, we're only going to yeah. see it in the purple. But under um, other lights, it'll go uh, kind of like a gray green. Uh, the color oh, is called cool. Hulk. Yeah, it's awesome. We had another one called Shifty Peach that goes from peach to pink, but uh, it got dibs quick. Shouts to Caitlin. Reefer I went Kitty. to school. Yeah, Reefer yeah. Kitty. Yeah, she scooped it. Yeah. 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 I went, to, went to elementary school with Shifty Peach. Oh, no way. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, who's your favorite glass artist? I had a feeling that you guys were going to ask me that question. And I, I really, I was thinking about it and I was like really trying to come up with an honest answer. And um, I have a handful. My, my truly, if I could acquire any glass right now, yeah. it would be a Mike Gongster Acid Eater pendant. Um, that, from the very first time that oh. I saw one, I was just like, that is so sick. Um, everything uh, about that technique and what goes into it, um, I, I really like. Um, Can you describe so, like kind of what the acid eater looks it's like? It's like two millies and just like a crazy, crazy tech. I don't know what the, even what it is. It's it's just a lot of crazy color going on into the piece. And then yeah, two millies and he has uh, his tongue sticking out. And then on his tongue he has like a big opal. Um, yeah, and they're they're just so cool looking. They call them the acid eaters, uh, but they go for like five k US on auction. So. That's why I. That's why I don't have one. Yeah, they're um, really beautiful pieces. Yeah. So you should go yeah. creep on Instagram if you haven't seen them. Yeah, his uh, Instagram yeah, is original like underscore gongster Mike Gong. And He's there's a bottle of Appleton rum at the Legacy Liquor Store over there. That's five grand as well too. If people are just gonna throw around five thousand dollars on glass, man. Just <laughs> 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 <to> say it. <laughs> No, uh, I don't have one of those either. Even the Team Japan show, like. Do you oh yeah, the Team Japan show was crazy. That was definitely some next level. Yes. Next level shit right there. Yes. Yeah. yeah I w wasn't able to go to that one. Oh. I really wanted to, but... It was beautiful. It was... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go ahead and guess that Japanese glass blowing company team. Hoping yeah. to place it. Yeah, yeah. Like discs, uh, disc glass, slop glass, um, and Rose Rhodes. Rhodes. Uh, team Japan. The bunch of just legendary Japanese glass blowers that have uh, mastered like... Um, Pointillism, if you yeah. almost with their millies, and they're and some of the most technical glass artists around. I was around, just gonna say, without sure. even having seen it or knowing very little about it, I was gonna say, and let me guess, it was technical as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's like cool. the most yeah. beautiful dot stacks and just like cleanest work you'll ever even see. Even the mothership, like collab. Yeah, the mothership collab. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Even the box that that piece went in was just wild. Yeah. But uh, locally, like I think that. Uh, being on the West Coast, we're super lucky. Like, I realized that right away the day that I opened my shop and all the local glass blowers started calling me like, hey, man, I heard you're a new shop that just opened up. I want to come show you some of my glass. And oh, I was getting no. calls like that, like, every single day. And then I um, see, like, shops on the East Coast that are, you know, struggling to get co in contact with glass blowers and stuff like that. So definitely being on the West Coast, um, super lucky. There's tons of talent here. Um, I really like uh, I like Blaze Glass. Obviously, anyone who knows yeah. me knows I'm a big fan of Blaze. Um, I enjoy his work. Um, I've seen Rob Biglin from like when we opened up. He was like right when he started uh, blowing glass, and I've seen him totally come up. And the work that he's doing is super clean. I'm really impressed with it now. Um, Stebby, obviously, Corey Glass, Stratosphere, John K. Um, they're all like just amazingly, amazingly talented. And I really think that uh, the industry here is like just just starting. So they're all going to just keep on progressing. And what we see now is just like a, a preview of probably what's to come, you know, the stuff that's on the table. So yeah. here's where I get the question, because somebody actually posed this question to me. Um, it's cool that you've got a ton of local guys making these super high-end pieces f in small numbers. But what about, like, and then you've kind of obviously got the so-called the China glasses, and then you've got some of the, the import. big companies. We call it yeah, import. import. We prefer okay, to call it import. Import, <laughs> import. What, whatever, you, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But then the, where is that sort of in between? Like if you... There's a lot of artists that price their things really reasonably. Like, for example, down store, downstairs at a 307 down West the Tasting. Downstairs. Downstairs at the... <laughs> downstairs... In the head shop at 307 West Hastings, um, there's some pieces by Thatcher, and they're like $120 Canadian, but they come with a banger, which is like 30 or 40 bucks. Yeah. So when you look at the starter prices for all the dab rigs, by the time you buy yourself a nail or a banger to go with the import glass, it ends up being the same price. So it makes way more sense to just get the locally made one. I, you know, I got one of my friends her first dab break for Christmas. She was stoked and I got her a little Thatcher piece. So there's definitely artists that will give you those like introduct introductory prices, you know, or auctions too. Like I got my Stabby Joe piece 
really reasonably priced with an auction. So I'm scared. I'm scared of shit to, to even somebody's. Yeah, this was like four grand, and she's like, "Don't even, don't bring that fucking thing near me, man." Yeah. I'm scared to death of that sort of shit. But yeah, you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever, you put it together. I, I'm I'm not so scared of touching that one. And then, well, what do you do? Here's my next question. What do you do if you're not in BC? What if you're like in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba? What if you're in Montana? What if you're not in Colorado or Washington or California or BC or somewhere where there's cats are making this this shit locally, like heavy? What do you find that's still okay? Like, what should you be looking for? Maybe you can give some people some tips or something if I can, because I get questions about it. And I don't really know what to say. Well, there's usually head shops somewhere nearby, and you got to find the ones that are you know, more activism based and more community based. So like in Ottawa, when I was down there, I went to Cannabis Emporium and it was so nice because I didn't really, I hadn't found much of the culture when I was living there. I was kind of young to find it. And I was so pleased to see all these guys like dabbing back there and all these artists that I love and admire. And there's only a handful of them that were Ontario artists. There was tons of blaze glass there was all sorts of kahuna glass there's all the guys that i know and hang out and smoke weed so with they're they making got their way there. across the, mm -hmm. see, that's cool but you could look also instagram's a great place to find glass art yeah yeah no, or that, online i was gonna say essentially the same thing like i was gonna touch on thatcher glass the bottles they're mint um it's yeah like you can essentially piece. get a um a piece and a banger, you know, in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 dollars. So yeah. you can't, yeah, you can't go wrong for a locally made piece, and they they function really well. Um, and for someone who's not local, finding glass, like I think that's where it's uh, important for like social media presence and stuff yeah. too, because we have a lot of guys hitting us up every day, um, and it's just a matter of are you willing to like answer those, you know, 50 DMs to get one sale, right? And guys want to see function tests, so trying to. Uh, I get hit up, you know, I, this is my budget, what can I, what can I get? Um, and I'll always ask them right away, well, like, I would recommend uh, getting a locally made piece. So you're going to be getting probably a little bit less than if you're going to China Glass, but it's going to be the start of something and I'm sure you'll be back for more. And you can follow the guy on Instagram and watch his progression and yeah. support a local artist and then people get excited on that. Um, so it's, I think it's up to the shop too to like try to... You know, turn because you know Funny ninety percent of my customers are looking for just like you know what's the cheapest bong. I get that question all the time. Well, yeah, so. and you're starting yeah. to see those now, like here on Granville Street. You got like the cigarettes smoke shops and shit. With, you know, buy chips and a Gatorade and mm -hmm. a pack of smokes and, and a phone a charger, score bar and a phone charger <laughs> thingy and and a bong with a sticker on the back of the shelf. And that's, they got them all over the place or there G now. Or G pen. Those ones I get such yeah. a kick out of it when you right. see the G pens at the corner stores. Right. Yeah, it's starting to go that way now. And yeah, I get hit with that, like, oh, but man, I seen this Jeep pen. I seen this Jeep pen for, like, 30 bucks down the street. Uh, down I, can the street. Get, I can get it. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, you, you so saw I, something like it. It looked yeah, yeah, like yeah. it. Well, uh, it I can that. get a $40 thing from 7-Eleven <laughs> now. You yeah. know what I mean? And there's, I don't know, is that, the, is that what you want? Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? I'll put it this way. I have some glass pieces that I've been... I had to close my eyes because I'm like, oh my god, it's it's done, it's over, and I thought it was gonna break. My like Nico makes the strongest glass. I've dropped my little Lucy carb cap so many times, and every time I like <laughs> flinch and yeah. close my eyes for a second, and every time it's like perfect because it's so well made compared to one of the I don't want to name names, but I picked up just like a little import bong, and it was just like the cheapest one at the store, and I used a coaster and everything, but it took about two weeks before the coaster underneath it was like soaked. And I was like, oh, that's funny. And there's just like a huge crack in it. Hairline it. Never yeah. put it down heavy, didn't travel with it. I only had it for like two weeks and it, and it cracked. So there's a huge difference. What a lot of people don't realize too is that there's a, this import glass, most of the import glass is made with, not most of it, but a lot of the import glass is made with soft glass or lower quality glass, whereas the guys who make it locally use the borosilicate, so it's way better quality glass. Buy local, support local. Love yeah, it. yeah. Absolutely. And I've had a lot of, uh, like, I've heard a lot of funny stories about people that come in, and uh, once you start talking about the quality of the locally made glass, and I tell them it's like the same, um, the borosilicate is the same as the old school German Pyrex. People get excited about that, and I hear, yeah, sure, I'll have a toke. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> There you go. I'm going to try this pie-eyed extract. This is really good, this one. On my new dagger. Thank you, man. That's the controversial Hindu master. 
The Hindu master. Can you explain this controversy to us? Okay, so the controversial Hindu master arose when Ali Alchemist last week brought me a bag of Hindu Kush to smoke on the show from Temple of Calyx. So I was like, oh, cool. And I looked at it, and I paused, and I said, that's really dope. I said, hey, take a look at this bag of master Kush I got from some hippie chick I know. And he went, hang on. That's a bag of my Hindu Kush. I said, no, that's a bag of the hippie chick's master Kush. <laughs> and I did the... <laughs> The three cups to figure out which one was which. Yeah, and Ali Alchemist picked the wrong weed. Mm. So somewhere along the line, we think that sh people that she know got a cut because some cuts went out <laughs> at one point from this. And sure enough, it came across. And they, he smoked it, I smoked it, and we were like, it's the exact same fucking weed. <laughs> anyway, so the controversial Hindu master, because is it really the Hindu? Or is it the master? Hmm. So Who knows? we'll never know. Controversial Hindu man. Tastes super good. I could yeah. see it being either, to be honest with you. It's funny. Right? Um, so Craig, can you tell us about the the early days of expert joints before you came to Pod TV? So earliest days of expert joints was about a year of a year and a half, two years, about two years, I guess, of me fucking around on my own. Um, I started expert joints with the idea of putting myself out there almost like a, a resume to use some of my, what was at that point, almost 25 years of cannabis experience in a, in a different way than selling 20 bags and running shops and all the things that I had sort of already done. So I decided to start the social and the Insta, put out some tutorial videos um, because my real inspiration was seeing these not very well put together videos and actually uh, uh, Wiz Khalifa sitting in a hot tub getting 800,000 views, teaching you how to roll a joint, and it wasn't a very well shot. The advice was, I don't know, it wasn't that clearly well presented. And, you know, I was just like, fuck it, I'm sick of seeing these camera phones, stupid videos, I need to make something better. So I called up some friends with some camera gears, put out a couple of few videos, made a dozen tutorials or so, got a couple million views, uh, and started doing a show along the way, because I had articles and features and news stories and just some written content. You know, um, Moved into the show progress, progress, I don't know, progressed <laughs> into the show. And then after about six months of doing that at the previous location, we did a cross collaborative um, extract Zen party or something like that with Canna Wide and Pot TV. I did the part one at their studio or at their uh, location. Part two here, I came and jumped in with Jer and he said, You were great, let's get you on the network. And a month later, I was here. Start the, the rest is infamy. <laughs> Well, wow. yeah. sorry, get rid of me. using my dab. <laughs> yes, enjoy your dab, please. Uh, Lollipop. Um, can, can you tell us about what exactly Expert Joints is mm. as an entity? Expert Joints is a multi-platform media outlet for the cannabis enthusiast. Uh, we offer articles, tutorials, reviews, news features, the live show, of course. Uh, obviously, I cover a lot of events, host events. I'm trying to do interviews, uh, be broadcasting from all of uh, the coolest cannabis... Uh, gatherings and, and functions that I can get to. Um, basically, it's what I'm trying to build it more into is a platform for experts from across the industry to come out, be able to share their knowledge, share their information, and for people to come when they just want to know what's up. Uh, at this point, I've got a pretty active news feed, a pretty, pretty popping social accounts, uh, at least reasonably well anyway. We get a, a lot of traffic out there, and then of course the show does great, biz uh, does great. Uh, Great things, and it's a lot of fun. It gets me obviously really high, <laughs> and it is, uh, yeah, it's a great thing to do. And I've been had a lot of uh, a lot of fun coming here, and there's much, much more to come. Um, so, what made you decide to choose the title "Expert Joints"? Well, we were sitting around at the house one day and trying to think of, well, what are we going to call this? And I had a working title and a different idea of I was going to maybe roll joints teach people how to roll them or we were trying to go through it and we didn't like the name that we had and I'm not going to call it the name because I still have it and you never know it could still come into play again but we were trying to think of different names and they were too long and they were too complicated and I got to the point where I was like well what am I and what am I talking about well these are joints and they're like really <laughs> good they're great joints they're the greatest joints. Yeah, right? They're awesome joints. They're super joints. They're so well good. They're just, you, I mean, because you're like the doctor joint, the scientist, the, and we played through it. All the, the expert, they're expert. Well, I mean, shit, I'm an expert uh, at rolling joints. These are expertly put together. Yeah, 
it works. Hang on. Let me check on Insta. Let me check on Twitter. Let me check on Facebook. Yeah, there's nothing there already. I can get all three at the same time. We're calling expert joints. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a, that's a pretty good reason. Um, were you worried about having the, uh, the, you know, the skill behind the name at all when you first launched it behind, first launched it as expert joints? Have you seen the video? <laughs> uh, my, my video, my joints uh, stand for themselves. Um, I've been smoking I, them all show and they're amazing. Yeah, they are. No, it's actually standing on the table. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's literally standing, it's literally on, the standing on the table. It's lit. Yeah. It's burning still. It's standing. Uh. Uh, no, I, uh, I can do this shit blindfolded and I always have. Uh, I've been rolling good joints for a long time. So, no, I, uh, I, I stand behind it. I don't claim that I roll the best joints, but I, I roll a really good joint. They're and pretty good. And I remember your, what was that, best buzz when you had everybody on? You and Dominique did a blindfold at the end. Well, hang and on. you're still like, yeah. come on. So, Don't yeah, Dominique <laughs> called me out after four hours of a live show <laughs> interviewing 41 different people. That was and she's crazy. like, I saw you do the blindfolded rolling, but I'm going to do it here. I'm going to challenge you to it right now. And I was like, oh, Jesus, Dominique. I don't really want to do it. Are you? Come on. No, no, no. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go. She got to grind it <laughs> half in the paper and... Oh. And I went through my thing, and she's like, I was going faster. I'm like, it's not a speed competition. It's the best joint. And I did the bit, and I did it's It's a whole bit because it's a technique, and it's a memory thing, and it just takes a certain amount of time. And sure enough, pulled it off, and I was like, okay. So I pulled out a pre roll that I had and the joint that I just rolled and went, pick which one was which. And you know which one she picked? The wrong one. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I have some people call me out on Instagram sometimes. Actually, you're in front of the camera. Can we just get you? To, yeah, there's a. There you go. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Um, yeah, we're joined by some of the lovely. Yeah, once in a while, people here. call me out or something. Like that. Oh, you can't roll worse shit. I'll be like, okay, cool. Well, come roll a joint with me. I'll be in the lounge. Can you chilling. roll a joint with one hand? Y yeah, but they're really bad. <laughs> Not expert. No, um, I can roll it behind my back too. But again, they're they're sketchy. Uh, uh, I can roll it while doing various all kinds of different activities uh, on a different level. Can you roll a joint while up? rolling a joint? Uh, I. <coughs> yeah, why not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Mm, I'm excited to try some of this. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I give all the shouts in the world to all the guys with the creative joint rollers. People ask me, braid me a joint, roll me a this, roll me a cross. Look, I love the novelty joints, and I think what those cats do are awesome. I could build you an Eiffel Tower if I had the time and want to take the effort and shit like that. Like, it's true, I could. But I got so many more things to do than do all that. So I'm going to leave it to the cats from the National Joint Rolling League, like Cody Van Gogh and some yeah. of the really cool mm -hmm. folks out there doing it right. Uh, all of them, totally. Uh, my joints are what they are. They're just well put together. They burn consistently. They burn evenly. They burn longer than blunts generally. Uh, they're straight. They're different. They just are what they are, and I will stand by it as my technique is on par with anybody else who I've seen roll a conventional, regular, what you would normally smoke. There's a few. Jody rolls an amazing joint. Jody rolls great joints. Jody They're actually known joints. as Jody's joints. Jody's we, joints everyone knows fantastic. Jody's joints. Oh. Chad good. Jacket from Liberty Farms, he rolls a great joint as well, too. He rolls more of a bat. Uh, they're really nice, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I roll. I Dana, just roll bats. Dana Larson fingers. rolls a yeah, joints. Not joints. See, okay, no. <laughs> it takes a lot to get me stoned up at DB. So. I interviewed Dana with that. We, we did a joint rolling thing. I never used that part of it, and then I lost it on a computer trans. It's, it's in a computer somewhere. I just don't know where. His joints are the craziest, hardest, the gnarliest, craziest fucking, nice. nasty, just, but, but pretty wise, they're not the nicest they're looking not the joints. But it's hard but to make God you pretty when it's as. Thick as like a thumb, and it's full of hash butter and, and oil, hash. And, and then he rolls them inside out or backwards, or as he claims that we roll them wrong. But yeah, he he's got a whole different style to him, man, and it's it's quite interesting. But yeah, those things are scary. They are intimidating. What, <laughs> oh, perfect. Thank you. Hey. We'll talk about this in a minute. That's uh, exciting. Continue. So, Craig. Uh, yeah. Would you be willing to honor us with a joint rolling demo live on the show here today? Whoa. I mean, you've already uh, rolled a couple on the roll, show I've here today. I've just been sort of just over here, but yeah, do you want to drop the, should I put the camera down or something <laughs> like that? Do you want to trade places? Try not to make too much of the crotch cam, I guess, but um, 
Yeah, the quick joint. Right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'll try. I'll keep them together. Um, <laughs> the table. You're good. It, it, I'm good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, what I find is that uh, important, important key things for me to have, obviously, everyone's going to have slightly different techniques and do their own various different methods and ways. Start with good bud. <laughs> first things first, start with the best bud you can and put it in a grinder of some sorts or cut it up. But I like to use, at home, I use a space case, uh, medium, titanium grinder called Old Faithful. Had it for a decade. You see her on the show every week. Uh, when I'm traveling, I travel with either a... How many chambers does your... Higher. I, I go two pieces. Two pieces? I, I don't honestly like the four pieces, personally, myself. I, uh, I find that they just end up collecting uh, more frustration <laughs> than they do anything else. So they're a good idea, and I, you know, I don't have no problem branding my name on with a higher one on there or something at some point. But um, no, I prefer a two piece. It's just it's also smaller, good to lighter. Know. Good um, to know. I'm taking notes here, mental right. notes. Yeah. So I would have the space case, but otherwise in this case I'm using one of the maintainers, of course, just Johnny B. Oh, oh. You get a higher maintainer. You get the expert joints maintainers. We got all those oh, here, oh, different oh, color sizes. Oh, oh yours oh. came off the side. There was a run of them that that peeled a little bit. Uh huh. Johnny B had an issue one time, but we fixed that in another in the next run. So anyway, uh, nevertheless, grind up your weed. Now, uh, either gonna dump it on a tray, a table, paper, something like that. Not or if you the got, ground. Not the ground. You can put it in your hand. You can do the fold over. I have a couple different joint rolling videos that you can check out. My uh, the best how to joint roll roll a, the best how to roll a joint video ever. Blah blah blah. Can't say it. Um, the best how to joint roll a video ever has uh, a little over a million views. And um, I claim that it's the best how to roll a joint video ever because of the production value, not because of the fact that my joint is better than anyone else's. But still, uh, no, it was, just, it was just a really good joint video, and I had to give it something catchy to call it. That's why I called it that. So, for those questions, so you either dump it on the table or with like a maintainer, you can take it and you can just pour it right in the paper. Um, I'll probably do a little bit of both just to show you. I get my papers. I like my smoking king sizes. You can, of course, Conveniently fit a pack of oddly enough. Oh, look at that! A pack of smoking just <laughs> singles, single wides. Uh, see, the more common smoking single wides, uh, they fit nice and conveniently inside one of these. So, shows the smoking. And then I just gather it all up, light this joint back up because I talked about. <laughs> Move the microphone over there. Give it a little scoop. Now I can either use a piece of cardboard, but I find that the lid usually works pretty good. And if you have it out where it's convenient, oh, look at that. It's almost always exactly the right size. So as long as you don't dump it in too fast, which can then send it flying everywhere, right? Get it mostly in there. Get it evened out. The more even it is inside the paper, the more even, oddly enough, your paper is going to be. If you catch any little bit of stem or seal or anything like that, grab it while you can. Better to grab that off the table if you can check it first or out of your little. Um, so that's enough, pretty much. Let me see. Is oh. there any more in the med tainer? <laughs> there was a little more in the med tainer. Yeah, that sound. I can always tell when someone nearby is rolling a joint from that, like the sound. Yeah, <laughs> classic med tainer. So then, what I do is I save myself a whole lot of trouble. Now, why do my joints end up looking so straight and so clean and like, well, this one's been smoked through now, but um, is because I don't really roll the fuck out of the joint. I just... You don't need to. I, you don't need to. Yeah. You see those people who back and forth a million times working the paper, working the paper, and working the paper. All you end up doing is wrinkling the paper and getting it all just either too hard. If you, at the beginning, before at this page, just when you close them over like this, if you start to shape it and form it and get it kind of even to where you want it, it's already, it's already mostly rolled. Now you just gotta put the paper around it. So what I do is I just keep working it back down. I feel there's something a little sharp there. Oh, there it is. Piece of stem, get that out. I think that little piece is gonna fall off. And as I work it down, I just keep like pressing with my thumbs down, down, and put the paper, pack that down with it. And I've just shaped pretty much the whole joint the way I want. And if you look, it pretty much even sticks to the paper right now by itself. So it's like half tucked already. It rolls itself. Basically at this point, yeah. So now all you're trying to do is just guide it back into place. So if you start on the outsides here, 
without putting a whole lot of pressure, you put, put most of your pressure in the middle and work your way out. But when you get to this part, about sort of the one thirds, two thirds, kind of as long as you can get your thumbs on there, all you're trying to do is just like tuck the paper in and, and guide it under. And once you get it underneath there, you can just use a little bit of motion to kind of make sure it's just nice and tucked and even. And I mean, it's gone, nothing left to do. Just like send it home, keeping it nice and even along the way. Get it to the point where you're lined up. Give it a lick. That lick though. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh. And I caught up my hand on the way back, but that's okay, I can save it. That was hilarious. Ooh, funny. After the lick. See, that's <laughs> the pressure of being expert joints. Uh, <laughs> yes. Celeste made me laugh, but watch it still save it. Anyway, you can still save it. But um, yeah, the, just save that last little part. Don't, uh, don't almost knock it all out of your hand just when you're about to finish it back up. It's still better than 99.9% .9 of people's joints. It's still pretty expert. Well, there's one little kind of a half a little twist in one part. But um, yeah, it came out pretty good. And then I, now I put my filters in last. I'd smoke that joint. Right? I was going to. <laughs> you probably will. Um, the, uh, I put my filters in after. Some people say, why don't you put your filters in first? Because when you put your filters in first, it's like a crutch. And that's actually what helps get you around and roll the paper. And it gives you a nice point to lean on to tuck. But what you're doing is then you're rolling your joint to the size of your filter, not to the size of your weed. And you notice sometimes it's a little sloppy or maybe it's a little shorter than it needs to be because that's where it fit to go to that size. If you roll your filter in after, you get the actual size of filter that you need. You can put it in. It doesn't usually get fucked around with the end. Um, and uh, if you use a nice piece of thin unlined cardstock or something like that that I use, don't use anything with inks. If you want it, if you can, slide that right in there. I put my scissors in the end and I give it a reverse sort of just unwind twist. And then what I do is I grab the little back part here and just give it a little half a little turn. And what it does is it keeps the joint open, uh, keeps the filter open, and then just pull off the end of it. And it should. This one's not gonna do it. Yeah. This one's not gonna do it because I duffed the end. Damn old pressure. Right. <laughs> um, stand for itself. Ta-da! Woo! That is exciting. Anyway, so that's just rolling a joint. There you go. So, just simple rolling technique. Um, but that's how I do it. For more, you can see that on my YouTube and, of course, expertchoice.com. <laughs> when did you roll your first joint? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So when I first started smoking weed, it was like in, it was in uh, uh, pop cans with holes poked in it. It was in shitty wood or glass stone pipes. And when I was trying to smoke a joint, it was in a cigarette tube that we dumped all the tobacco out of and oh, filled back up with weed because no, we couldn't roll joints. Uh, then I had a friend and I got my cousin and stuff and other people could roll better joints around. So I didn't really have to do it very much. But I think I rolled my first, first joint of myself at probably 17, I think. The first couple of years, everyone else had smoked them and rolled them. And it wasn't very good. <laughs> it really wasn't Did you very start good. with the pencil roll or did you just? Um, well, what I first started with was rolling, yeah, around a pencil and then packing that as a tube. And then I started, then I found a pack of wired rollies, the Randy's rollies. Oh, the Randy's. Right? And, and I used that, it was like something to lean on. And it, and it got me the, the basics of the technique to be able to do that. And once that was, I got better, it wasn't falling apart anymore. It didn't like, look like super pregnant and tiny in the other ends there. And I can't, it's all falling out. I couldn't roll a joint to save my life. And then um, finally my homeboy J-Rock, when I was like 19. Yeah, just about 19, 18 and a half, 19. He said, listen, I'm tired of your bullshit fucking joints, okay? You gotta be able to roll a joint or we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> And I was like, okay. So he threw me an ounce of weed and a pack of zigzag blues. And he said, don't come back out of that room until you can roll this shit. Until you can roll this shit. And he was six foot three, about 215, 220 pounds, large brother named J Rock. Uh, I said, okay. And by the time I came out, I could at least you know, roll a joint that didn't suck anymore. And within about three, four years after that, it really came around. By the time I was 25, I was pretty much doing the same technique, and that was it, so. <laughs> Everyone's all tied, chewing on joints. 
or chewing and chewing and smoking on joints. Chewing on clear spheres. I'm high smoking on joints. I just ate one of, what are these called? Galaxy yeah. gummies. Yeah. VIP That's galaxy right gummies. You had a grape one. Yeah, they're super good. Oh, are those, where's the, what? <laughs> There's lemon and lime too. Oh, the lime ones. Bust those Shout out to Moda. Oh yeah, okay. Moda. And I'm also drinking their canna, yeah. canna And drink Facebook canna. page, Moda Cannabis Products. Mm -hmm. More cannabis products. Yeah. Should be doing that. Um, ooh, we should do more dabs too. We haven't tried this here. Wait, wait. Let's oh, get this Haley's comment really. on the camera so we can take some dabs of it. Woo! From cannabis extraction. Oh, and whoa. And then also, Pretty. there's Oops. this pink Kush bud from cannabis extraction too. If you want to put that in there after. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And then we do. This yeah, I'm gonna holler at them, man. I'd like to check their shit out yeah. on the show one day. Should I just? <laughs> the tray cam. Sorry, what was the variety all night? Um, that one's the Haley's Comet. Oh, super and cool. And then the nug there is Pink Kush. Dope. So we're going to try these Girl Scout ones? cookies. Legit. Straight. Da bob. Right? <laughs> okay. Da bob. You made me <coughs> curious when you got all excited about the lime, so now curious. I'm going to have to have my <sighs> third gummy candy for the show. Okay, well, I'm oh, gonna Jesus. This one then. Gum, 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 mm. gum. You guys like, want, we have lemon still. There's two left. It's all good. I'm still enjoying the re remnants of the clear sphere at the moment. Alyssa's in. I'll be all right. Okay. I have shit to do after this. <laughs> I'm just, That's you know. That's what they all say. I'll just challenge myself. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, it timed you out. Oh, yeah, no. It really for an hour, but that's okay. It actually... Mm, I'm going to say something when it goes back on. <laughs> you know, that's bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah. Craig... Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got a battery pack on it. <laughs> oh, snap. Mm. Yeah, Instagram Live just kills the battery. Uh, Quick styles. <laughs> hey, there we're back. Sorry about that. You can only do an hour. Uh, what's up, everybody on Instagram? But at the same time, fuck you, Instagram, for doing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. only an hour? Come on, jeez. Yeah. Hey, we're back, though. Silly. Now I we're back as long as my phone, phone lasts, but I do have the yeah, battery pack on it, so hopefully it works. <laughs> um, so what kind of content do you have on your show? Well, generally my shows usually follows a similar format. There's an interview, a lead interview that does the first half of the week. I smoke a lot of weed from a local <laughs> provider of some sorts or some sort of provider. Um, Quite a bit of joint rolling and weed smoking. Uh, there's dabbing and other activities as well. Uh, we do tend to feature anything from producers to musicians and artists and, and activists, uh, writers, doctors, business owners, people from all across the country, all across the world. Uh, and then... Um, I also do a lot of various different segments. We'll do various giveaways. We've got some food segments, and I've got some various different uh, interactive components that we do as well, too. It's generally a couple of segments, something related to food, and a number of, uh, a number of good folks and good people to talk to. It's uh, you know, a lot of ch interactive with the chat the best we can, and always some almost always some stuff to give away, some peaches, products to feature, and, and some shit to promote. Let's shame it. Shameless self-promotion. What is one thing that you think is different about Expert Joints than the other shows? Um, well, I guess I'm a little bit lighter fare. I mean, this is, you know, the lifestyle show as well, too. But I'm definitely the least activism driven of the, of the shows. I think I'm more interview and product heavy driven and that kind of thing. I'm, I, they're, they're the news and information. I'm the entertainment. Uh, mine's a little bit more of a late night talk show kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> situation. Um, I think the also as well too, I, I, I'm the only one who produced, well, I guess Jared does, or no, do you do Jared's production on Fridays too? No, okay. So, okay. So I, I do all my own shit at the same time. I set my setup quite a little <laughs> bit different. My show looks a little bit different than the other shows too. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. So I got more of the picture in picture and a few more yeah, graphics I've been and shit. Yeah, on your show and it's like everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's like three. There's like usually three computers kicking around, a bunch of mics, a bunch of rigs and shit. It's covered. I get here about f four hours before the show starts. Load that shit up. I work on it for about two days in advance, three days. I, I, I program weeks. I'm, I'm scheduled. To, I got like two spots left in March. You know, <laughs> we're, we're there. 
But I'm it, getting more ahead. It's hard to, mm -hmm. and everything is, like you, you'll have a regular week planned and then all of a sudden it's like this random event's happening or this random person's in town. Ooh. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> uh, so it's like, it's hard too to have it like be adaptive while also planning ahead. So I'm trying to do like to I get balance. a main booking and then if something you know interesting comes up, I'll try and adjust on the fly or reschedule as according to plan. But yeah, you kind of make it, you fake it till you make it on some. Trust me, they don't always go off the way they're supposed to. And they don't always necessarily start out planned to be three hour shows with 27 people on them, but just sometimes how it happens during the week because there's lots to go on. You know, it's fun. I, I try and look at the show as a, a lifted look at the loud lifestyle, if you will. We're just a finger on the pulse of pot. We're literally here in Vansterdam. We're at Cannabis Culture. We're all looking BC bud running around rampantly. I mean, what do you want? I'm just here to kind of say, look, hi, this is what I'm doing. And this is what a bunch of people I know are doing. And if you like what we're doing, check it out. If you don't, cool. Do your thing. Uh, we're going to be over here doing it anyway. And that's what we do. And people seem to, for the most part, enjoy it. At least to some degree, anyway. So I thank everybody who watches and does it, who's been a part of it. You've all been around and on the shows and shit like that. I'd love it if you gals came and sat in and sat yes. with me and did a little co-host. It's kind of nice. Like you say, it's, it was really good having Stormy here. It was nice to have someone to be a secondary person, to be there to work with and bounce shit off of. And <laughs> when there's something technical to fix, so we can else will do something else. Like, <laughs> like, there's lots of pros of having someone around. But... It's been really great having Al sit in for the month, and Opus has been there as well too. You know, it'd be good to have uh, you ladies join me. Yes, definitely. Come do That'd the be five. just come do the hangout with me one Thursday. I know you got lots of other things to do, and you all got other commitments and shit. But we'll line it up. It'd be great to have you. It would be awesome. Maybe one day Ooh. I'll get a regular again. But having the guest sit-ins is still kind of fun. So it is. It's fun rotating too. Mm -hmm. But there's, a, it's a little bit less predictable. I mean, when you've got people like Opus and, and Al, obviously, you know. Yeah, well, you know it's going like to be good, but you know it's also going to be kind of, it's, gonna, it's not going to go according <laughs> to what you had planned. Yeah. The, Thanks, boss. The script is going to go kind of out the window when you've got cats like Opus and Johnny B and just Al. Well, like last week, Johnny B just like showed, showed up. up. And fucked everything up. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, what is happening right now? Oh, it's I love Valentine's. when people, it makes it fun when people right. show up. Like Johnny B's a good one because they're like, come in, give a cool update and then it'll be like, Okay, gotta bye. go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's perfect. Whereas like, there's some people who'll be like, hey. <laughs> and then they'll just kind of like, you know, Linger? throw their two, yeah, and throw their two seconds. It's like, this isn't the show I had planned. <laughs> so right. just... Shut up. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> we're still we're still doing the show I have planned. Yeah. And back to it, guys. You're fire. Ooh, Speaking of fire, this like Haley's Comet's this. really tasty too. You should try it. Yeah. And we should I'm gonna light this joint. So pass here, you guys should try some of this these dabs. Rigs. There you go. I brought a rig to dab order too. Oh nice, cool. Um, I, I brought joints anywhere. to smoke yeah. out of. Oh, oh. Don't even, don't pull that on me. Do <laughs> we it. We can get water. <laughs> we, can, we can put some cool in it. We can put some Snapple in it. <laughs> no. Some medicated Snapple oh, in the dad room. Wait a minute. Most I'm going to put some Snapple in it. No, no. Extra turfs. Um, so, Craig, where can we watch your show, and when can we watch your show, well, and how and why? Of course, you can watch it on pot.tv. You can watch it as you're seeing it on Cannabis Culture's Facebook page as well as e their YouTube page, Pot TV's YouTube page. Uh, expertjoints.com, of course, you can catch it on there. I'd be happy if you watch it there. But we've got the YouTube chat and the Facebook chat usually going on. Um, and also the recent edition as well, too. Uh, Cannabis Life Network is now also uh, streaming as well, too. So there's like five different places. Plus, if this Instagram thing keeps up and if people are liking it, I may decide to um, uh, put it on Instagram as well, too. And uh, trying to get it everywhere. Well, why not? Yeah. And That's much awesome. more to come. Oh, I, I have Jen from Smiling Buddha texting me. Yeah. Buddha! Oh, I'm wearing hi, my Jen. Smiling Buddha shirt. What's oh, up, Buddha? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> hi, Jen. If you're watching, we love you. Loud Onio. <laughs> She's awesome. I like that name. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see her this weekend. weekend yes, at, at the, the Mom, Mom Cup. Cup. Yay! I'm so excited <laughs> and <laughs> nervous <laughs> and excited. I'll be there. You'll be there. You'll be there. You'll be there. I'll be there. 
Huh? Yes, I know you should be because I will you're be. on the back cover of the magazine, aren't you? I'm inside the magazine. Oh I'm the shit! Magazine. Damn, yeah, Daniel. You're all in the magazine. Uh, she's in lots of places in the magazine. I am. Uh, I know she's in here. I've seen. There she is. There she is. The one and only. Damn. The lovely. Marley. Ooh, she's so pretty. <laughs> we got some pictures loaded in actually, since I thought we might talk about twelve high chicks. So. And I've got a judge's kit right here. Ooh, you do have a judge's kit. That's exciting. I'm stoned. That took a second to like register, wow, but <laughs> and actually, actually, I have the VIP judge's kit. Oh, you have the VIP judge's mm -hmm. kit. Ooh. So that goes down this weekend, 24th, 25th, 26th. Information coming out as to the location coming soon. I have heard a rumor, um, but I can neither confirm or deny. But um, Stay tuned for more of that coming from their camp in the next couple of days. But yes, this weekend, the 24th, 5th, and 6th, the Mom Cup goes down. And of course, I will be there covering it. And I think most of the Pot TV crew will be down there. Lots from the cannabis cultures should be around, I'm up supposing, well, with Opie yeah. running things. Yeah, well, Boss List is going to be helping out on Saturday, which yep. will be a lot of fun. Oh, we're doing a stream from there? Oh. I'm not sure. She's going to be helping me get some video, some coverage for Paw TV. Don't. And on Sunday, Celeste is going to be, be helping out. So. Nice. Yeah. And then I'm going to be there all weekend. Well, yeah, I'm going to be down there. I was thinking about should we, shouldn't we do a stream? Also, we um, should do sub streaming. For, I think Jer might be doing his show live from there. That would make sense. Okay. Uh, so I've heard sort of a little bit of the rundown of what it's looking like. It might be good to do something on Saturday. There could be yeah. some opportunity there. And I believe the awards are on Sunday. So there's a couple opportunities and things that we could. Stay tuned. You never Just know. Just do it both. Canada's, we we yeah. may or may not. Um, I think <laughs> I'm going to have the CLN camera crew with, with me there as well, too. Okay. Um, so we'll get some footage. So, you know, there'll be a, a three-minute com compilation video somewhere afterwards on my show. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, where can we follow you, Expert Joints? At Expert Joints. Yes. Uh, yes. Instagram. Twitter, Facebook, uh, and of course, expertjoints.com. I do technically have a Snapchat page because I have registered it or something. It may have expired or something, but no, I think I oh. have it. Um, but I really I don't use it. I have a lot of other things already to do, um, but supporting the rest of them are enough. Uh, and I don't, I have no interest in Pinterest. Uh, yeah. But I'm probably sure I probably <laughs> took that name as well, too. Uh, yeah, please check me out at expertjoints.com. Follow on the social. <laughs> and of course, Thursdays, check me here at Pod TV, sitting in between one of these two, basically, doing my thing at 4.20, because uh, I like to be different. Expert Joints Live, this week with Enrico from Supplementor. That's very exciting. And Al the Alchemist as Temple Month continues. Are you going to be testing out the new Sublimator? I believe that is the plan. Oh. <laughs> I might need to Damn say Daniel. hi because I saw it, but I haven't right, tried it. Right. It's, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a very limited exposure to the room here. I have a lot of people who are like, "Hey, I might stop by." I'm like, "I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to charge tickets to admission to get into this one." Here. <laughs> but you know, Carly, BC Gal, you two can come through if you want to say Aww, hi. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. much appreciated. I have to work 12 to 10. Oh. <laughs> well, depending on how well the show goes, we might still be here. See, it's nice. I can always bug people because I'm just like always well, in well, this building. Yeah. <laughs> well, my other thing is because like I've got a subby at home and it's cool, but it's an old one. But like I want the new timer, and now that I've seen the new unit, I kind of want the new unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like the base with the touch button one because I don't have that one. And and I like the glass tube. So basically, the I want to. Glass tube, yeah. It's way better, right? Because how do you clean the plastic one? It's so nice to have something you can just put in ISO. So to me, I'm like due for a new one. Mm -hmm. And so what I think I might do is, in case uh, uh, Enrico shows up here, uh, I'm going to bring cash for a couple of them. No. <laughs> 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 just like buy them off them right here while I'm here. No. Uh, no, Enrico, do you take Visa? That's my question. Um, bring extras, buddy. Just bring a whole car full of them because I'm sure people are itching to get their hands on the new sublimator. So mm -hmm. you'll have no problem. Bring those around. Yeah. Bring six or eight with you tomorrow. No. <laughs> um, yeah, it should be a good episode, He's of course. Not kidding. I'm not really kidding. Bring an extra. <laughs> one, two. Bring me a short one and a tall one with the cages. Yeah. And where can we follow you? Um, you can follow us uh, online at uh, the Glass Suits Gallery. <laughs> for Instagram, uh, we have uh, glassroots.ca. Our page is always under construction because our pieces are coming in and going out so quickly that uh, it's hard to keep it up to date. Um, but we do have like a pretty good 
amount of our inventory of our locally made pieces up uh, and up to date right now on our website, classroots.ca. Um, March 3rd uh, is a Friday. Um, it's going to be our two year anniversary celebration. Uh, so you guys can feel free to come by and join us then. Uh, we're going to have Turf Fire Society providing dabs. We're going to have food. We're going to have uh, Blaze Glass doing a drop. We're going to have John K doing a drop. We're going to have Evan Shore bangers available. So those guys who know, they know uh, they're going to want the Evan Shores. Um, they're going to want to get their hands on the glass. And we also have one surprise drop as well. Um, some rather hard to obtain uh, glass will be available for purchase directly from the shop. One of the only shops in Canada that's gotten wholesale on these particular pieces, so we're really excited on that. So come on out, check it out. It's going to be a good time. And also, we have the Stebby Glass um, UV recycler that we're going to be giving away. So tune in uh, later today or check us out. Make sure you follow the Glassroots Gallery on Instagram. And uh, that piece is going to be given away, and we're going to announce the details on how to get that piece, how to possibly make it yours um, later on tonight. And the winner will be announced on March 3rd when we do our two-year anniversary. So make sure to stay tuned, and uh, we're really excited for everything to come this year. Awesome. That's dope. So, Craig, where is your favorite place to enjoy an expert joint? I mean, admittedly, my favorite place is at home on my couch with my dog and the TV and chilling. Oh, that's such a good place to that's enjoy That's like my joint. absolute favorite place. But there's a couple of dope spots around Vancouver. There's the one out on the point in Stanley Park. You know where the trees come in, up by the baseball diamond there, across mm -hmm. from the parking lot there. You go dip down there. That's one of my absolute favorite places. Uh, pick any, any fucking beach anywhere along the seawall or anything like that. I'm, I'm, I'm good with all that, too. Uh, I love it. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to smoke weed. But yeah, home is where the heart is awesome. and where Parker is. Shouts to Park Parks because they're really <laughs> watching. What about you, Kyle? Where's your favorite place to smoke joint? Yeah, like definitely like seawall. You know, like I've smoked so many DVs along the seawall. Um, right in like the False Creek area by Science World, I've literally smoked probably a thousand DVs there. <laughs> um, there's like a little abandoned dock that there is a fence. Yeah. And uh, I would jump the fence and you'd go and sit out on the dock there. And uh, yeah, it was just beautiful. Sometimes uh, harbor seals would pop up and uh, you'd just be smoking a demon. You feel like you're just there with wildlife. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely lucky to live on the West Coast and definitely feel blessed to be able to just jump on the Sky Train or you know, drive into downtown and just have that epic scenery right, right there for us. Yeah, Vancouver is pretty fucking awesome. Well, what's really cool about the fact that you can have cool, nice, chill, relaxing places, because unfortunately, a lot of other places you go to, there might be a beautiful place to smoke weed, but you're like this the whole time. Yeah. Like waiting and tripping and shit. I don't even think about that yeah, to the point I where I'm... Care. You're worried about someone else going up and be like, hey... Let me get some of that. Yeah, right? As opposed yeah, exactly. to, hey, don't do that, right? Like that's the, And when you're elsewhere, so I just blaze them all nonchalant like I'm back here. People say to me, hey, hey, yo, man, you can't fucking smoke that right now. Yeah, my that? friends oh, in Ottawa don't... get so annoyed with me because they'll just be walking around, like, sparking it up, just normal. And they're all like, what are you doing? Like, like it's one thing on the sidewalk, but, like, hold, hold it down. Like, be discreet. I'm like, why? It's a fucking joint. That's like, like I don't care. Like, we like all walk down the street like smoking joints and no one even cares. And then down here I do it and everyone's like, but even down here, like some people look at me like, what are you doing? And no, like, man, I was in like some care. Calgary subdivision, you know, in the middle of the suburbs in some cul-de-sac somewhere just outside the car ripping one. <laughs> and like, it's like literally it's 3.30, kids are getting off from school. Not even thinking, not paying attention because I live downtown. There's no kids around. I don't really think about that either. And they're like, yo, yeah, you can't smoke that here, right here, right now. Why? Why do you think? Because first of all, you're A, you're in Calgary. And second of all, it's like you're in a playground zone. Come on. Oh. So, okay, well, can we go somewhere else and I can smoke this? Yeah. Like, no, I just put that shit out. I was like, oh. <laughs> so in contrast to that, it wasn't that long ago. It was with Jeremiah, and we pulled into, like, it's near a tennis court, and it's behind a school. I don't think this school was in at the time, but the security car pulls up to us, and they're like, Hey guys, like, what are you doing here? And then Jared just looks at him. He's like, Oh, we're just smoking a joint. And they're like, Okay, cool. And they drive away. And I was like, <laughs> yep. What isn't th is what? What does security do other than stop people from smoking joints? Like, <laughs> what is your job now? Uh, it's graduated to crystal meth. Yeah, Vancouver. So um, yeah, pretty much. Right. Unfortunately, are but you yeah. Here, are you here to rob the place? No, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's fentanyl. Yeah, right. Like, come on now. Yeah. That's, that's messed up. Yeah, man. 
No, and thank if you. you need some help with that, my, mo- some my help. mom always says to me, you got to be careful. They're going to put the fentanyl in your weed. And I was like, um. I had a, I had a customer come in and say, that, like, hey, you hear that? They're, they're putting fentanyl in the weed, too. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think so. And I'm not sure about that one. I've heard a lot of people they're saying it. I costs, haven't read a single yeah. article or actually seen any yeah. evidence of that actually happening. It sounds like a lot of reefer madness, which is something that we're seeing yep. a lot of right now yep. with the legalization coming up. I think I saw one or two things that suggested that it wouldn't really affect you in that way, but the price point of it comes down to and why they use it for in the substances they use it for, you wouldn't put it, it in makes weed. no sense. <laughs> yeah, it's too expensive. It would make the weed way more expensive, and it would make it of a lower quality that people didn't yeah. want. So there's no, there's no reason to do it. There's no... Yeah. It doesn't make no. You, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So. Um, well, we've already been doing this show for over an hour, Whoa. but we've got tasty dabs to show us. So One more dab. Dabs. Dab for the road. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna do the Eldorado extracts because it's so tasty and terpy and delicious, and you should follow them on Instagram. Eldorado and Instagram extracto. likes your decision. Look, it's throwing hearts up for your Eldorado dabs. <laughs> oh, yes. yummy! Instagram is going crazy. Someone hard, hard, hard. I like should, Eldorado dabs. We should all do something <laughs> different. Yeah, right. What else? This is here. The Pyatt extract is that one. Is this yeah. the Haley's Comet? Haley's no. Comet somewhere. Uh, I, I took that home from my own private collection. Here, you guys should try some of this stuff. Haley's Comet. This is the Pyatt stuff. You guys didn't try that. And then now we can all try all the different dabs. Now they all get dabbed. Yay. <laughs> Nobody gets left out. Yay. So El Dorado Extract Co. Pied Extract and CE, is it CE Extract Co? Um, on Instagram, C- there's CE underscore head office. CE head office. Nice yeah. plugs. Thanks. I feel I'm, I feel I'm, yeah. I feel I'm wearing off on people. It's just now become a custom thing that people are just used to now. Well, you well gotta, that's the way you got to find them. And How the else are you going to be uh, like, yeah, they're this, but I'm not going to tell you where to find it. Yeah, and like <laughs> when people are nice enough to like, hook us up. Hell we yeah. want to give them a thank you, you know, because yeah. it's awesome. We appreciate people being generous and generous enough to support our show and get us really high while we do the show. Well, there's a lot of work goes into making these shows, high. man. Thanks. Have you seen that video? Sorry, I have no idea why I'm bringing this up. <laughs> <laughs> I just did her, like, impression. There's, like, some girl on Instagram or something like that, and she's like, you know, I smoke weed, like, People are just like, I smoke weed to escape reality. She's like, no, I smoke weed to get high as a motherfucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's seen that Okay, Okay. I was like, okay, no one else has seen it. All right, then. <laughs> I just like to smoke weed. I just like to smoke weed. Smoke it's weed comforting. every day. Um, ooh, I need that torch. Uh, He's, my man's got a collection over here. Oh. Uh, that one's out of butane, apparently. So that one's done so. So there we go. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, be sure to tune in next week and be sure to tune in on Wednesday for From Under the Influence. Greg Cushy and Al. Yes. And on Thursday, who do we have on Thursday? Like I said, Enrico Bouchard from The Sublimator, Al the Alchemist from Temple of Calyx. It is going to be a wonderful show. I... Uh, I know I should have sorry mom Uh, yeah it's going to be a great show Temple Month wraps up Enrico brings out the new sublimator it's going to be dope and I will next time Uh, I will the next time Um, uh, yeah it'll be a good show Uh, I think I'm going to do we're going to do some Puff Puff Pass along and um, maybe chronic cooking Yeah, so it should be a full show very exciting it'll be a good one Show episode 81. 81? Yeah. Wow. In a row. <laughs> in a row. I, I've missed episodes. It, I've, I can't say I've done them in a row. Yeah, well, you've been that's on the network a little longer as well, too. So. Yeah, that's true. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, true. you got a lot of things to go. So my, my, the anniversary of me being the host of the 420 Lifestyle is coming up. I took over the show after 420. It was my official first show right. on my own. So we'll have to do something fun for that show. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm coming right up on my one, right up in and around on my one year of uh, being on the network here. Um, that's not too far away. I think that's in April, I think. 
March, April, March or April. Um, or yeah, so that's cool. So happy to be over here for a yeah. while doing it. So it's uh, it's been a good time. But uh, and yes, the three year anniversary cool. of Expert Joints comes up the week before 420. Uh, in general, we just had the year and a half mark of uh, Expert Joints Live. So many things. Episode 104. I'm already starting to think of. That should be a good one. I wish I could do that for our head. Um, and on Friday, we've got Cannabis Culture News Live. Yeah, you do. Jeremiah and sometimes Johnny. <laughs> sometimes Johnny. He's all, all over the place now, traveling and stuff. Yeah, sometimes me, too, when there's no Johnny. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I heard, I heard J-Mac was going to take over last week. Oh, was he? I, th he? I think he inserted himself into John's seat, gave himself, anointed himself the position. <laughs> That's funny. <coughs> We love you, J-Mac. Um, <coughs> and then, yeah, back again on Monday with me and BC Bad Gal. Yeah. And you can follow <laughs> me on Instagram and Twitter at Carly Marley 420 and you can find me on Facebook as well, Carly Marley. Um, be sure you follow Cannabis Culture, Cannabis Culture Magazine, Cannabis Culture Store, and all those wonderful <laughs> people. <laughs> Hot TV. <laughs> so many plugs. Yeah, and you can follow me, BC Bad Gal, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Massroots. Yeah. Let's follow us. We love you. Hey. And thanks for watching. <laughs> I hear you over there. Hey, I got a credit slide. I roll that now, too. So what do you want? I can't, I can't say nothing. Peace, Bot TV. We'll see you all Thursday. Well, Toodles. See you Wednesday. Come back and watch Greg and Cushy and them. Yes. Um, I don't know if they're done, but yes, Instagram. Yeah. That was fun. Now I'm going to come yeah. over and turn you off. Yeah. Hey, we look, I see a lot of faces, so it looks like probably smiles and hearts, <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> can't Keep see you, <laughs> but... Yeah, we're good.